Hello everyone, today we are going to go over how to do Breath of the Wild cell shading in Blender. Now to preface, I have looked into the Tears of the Kingdom footage to see if shaders changed between the games, and it seems like they both use the same shader, so this should work for both games. Now before we start, if you don't have time to watch the whole tutorial or you just want to go and support me, you can actually go to my Gumroad and buy the finish shader for $5. But anyways, I've started a new Blender project, and the first thing we need to do is get our Breath of the Wild files into Blender. I got my Breath of the Wild files from the Models Resource website, so I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. All these files are in the DAE file format, which means in order to get them into Blender, you need to go to File, Import, Collada DAE, you'll double click on the file, and there you go. Now you will have to do the same for the rest of the assets that you want imported, so I will just skip ahead and we will come back when I have all those imported. And now that all of our assets are in Blender, let's just go ahead and clean things up a bit to get this stuff out of our way. Uh, for now, let's create a new collection. And we will name it Hidden. And then we will be moving our armatures to that collection. And turning it off. So we're basically hiding all the armatures here since we aren't going to be working with them. And we can also do the same for the base body that Link has, because we don't need that anymore. He's wearing clothes. Okay, now that those are out of the way, we can get a good look at what we're working with here. Uh, we'll just switch to material view so we can see our textures. And already you can see things just aren't even close to what we want. All the materials are using the normal maps for their color. And the face has this really weird red texture that we'll talk about later. We also have an issue where almost every part of Link has two almost identical meshes on top of each other. Now, you might ask why these duplicate meshes exist. Uh, the game actually uses two sets of UVs, and the people of Models Resource cut those two UV channels into two different meshes because some programs have a hard time importing meshes with two sets of UVs. Which, this is helpful in lots of cases, but here we need them as one object, so here's how we're going to fix it. So we'll want to select the second layer, and you can tell which one is the second layer, both by the purple color of the mesh here, and the fact that it has the name Layer 2 in the top left. And once you have that selected, you can go over to the Object Data Properties tab, and open up the UV Maps tab here. Hit the plus sign so you can make a copy of the current UVs, and we will name this top one layer one, and the second one layer two. Now you want to do this for every mesh that has a duplicate. Some don't have duplicates, like the hair or the eyes or the bells for instance, but in that case you can just leave them alone. If you're using assets ripped directly from the game and not from models resource, then you'll likely have both of the UV channels on the same mesh already. So just name them both. UV channels layer 1 and layer 2, and you'll be fine. What we're going to be doing is a data transfer to move the UVs from the layer 1 mesh to the layer 2 mesh so we can use them in one single material. So we're going to want to select the layer 2 mesh again and go to the modifiers tab. We're going to add a data transfer and it's going to ask us for a source. We're going to want to put our layer 1 mesh into here. So let's hit H to hide our layer 2 so we can see our layer 1. And we'll add it as the source. Now we're going to want to hit face corner data and open up the tab here. Hit the UVs button, switch the mapping to topology, and open up the UVs tab down here. Now this part here is basically asking us which UV channels we want to use to transfer from the layer 1 mesh and which UV layer on our second mesh that we want to overwrite with that. So let's select the UV channel, and then let's overwrite layer one. We'll hit apply, and now we don't need our layer one mesh anymore. So let's just move that to the hidden collection as well. And after you do that, you can hit Alt H to unhide our layer two mesh. And with that, we've successfully completed the setup for one of the meshes. Uh, you'll need to do this for every duplicate mesh, which is pretty tedious, so I'm just going to skip ahead again. Alright, 
And now that that's done, we can finally move on to the process where we make the actual shaders. So we'll want to make a new window for the shader editor. So go down to the bottom of the window, right click and hit vertical split. So we split this in two, switch to the shader editor and we can hit N to get rid of that panel there. We can delete all of this, add texture, image texture, and we can open our textures now. So we're first gonna open this ALB texture here for the tunic. ALB is short for albedo, which is basically just the color. And you can see it is indeed the color here. So let's add an input VMAP node. We're gonna put in our layer one UV channel in here, and we're going to connect it to the albedo texture. This is basically saying that the albedo texture is going to be forced to use the first UV channel, the layer one UV channel, no matter what. Okay, now let's add in more of our textures. Let's select this texture node here, hit shift D, move this down, and then we can add the next one of our tunic textures, the SPM texture, which is short for specular mask. So I'll double click on that, and then you can see doesn't look quite right. That's because it needs to use the layer 2 UV channel, which we haven't set it up to do that yet. So let's copy this UV map node, switch it to layer 2, and then connect that to our texture. And now it looks pretty good. We'll do the same for the last texture, which is the NRM texture, the normal map. And we also need to connect the layer 2 UV channel to it. And we will also want to set our normal map to non-color. Now make sure to always set the normal map to non-color. I don't think there's a single case when you're using Blender that you don't want it to be non-color. And if you don't then the shading is going to look really really bad. But uh yeah that's all of our textures for this one piece of clothing. And now we can move on to working on the actual cell shading. Okay, so I've loaded up the game so I can show you all what part of the shader we're recreating first. Uh, right now we're going to recreate the fake light that Link has on him inside of buildings and other areas where he is away from direct sunlight. And now I say fake light because the light isn't really made in the traditional sense. Uh, the light is actually made with vector math, where the shader is basically saying, here is the direction the sun would be coming from, so make a highlight there on Link. And you can tell the light is fake too, because Link's arms don't cast shadows on his body here. Whereas in direct sunlight, his arms do cast shadows on his body. You can see right there. Now let's head back into Blender and see if we can recreate this. Okay, now that we're back in Blender, let's start out by adding a sunlight. And you can also add an empty mesh for this instead of a sunlight, but a sunlight just makes more sense with the context. So now we gotta make sure our sun is selected and we head over to our object properties, find the rotation XYZ. We're gonna get the rotation X, copy as new driver, and we're gonna head over to our material and we're going to add a combine XYZ node. We're going to right click on the X paste driver and we're going to do the same thing for the Y and the Z. Copy as new driver, paste driver, copy as new driver, paste driver. Now what that's going to do is it's basically going to take the rotation of our sun and use it for our shader. Okay now let's go back to our material. Let's add a normal map node and connect the normal map to the normal map node and let's add a vector rotate connect the normal map to the vector rotate switch it to Euler invert it and then we'll take our combine XYZ light direction node here put it into the rotation and we'll also add a separate XYZ and now if we just look at the Z channel here, you can see 
we actually have light direction happening wherever we move our sunlight. And this is just fake light, by the way. This is all just math. There's no... Like, I can turn this light totally off, and it still works just fine. I do need to add some sharpness here, though. So let's add a math node. Switch it to multiply add. Let's make this multiply by 10,000. 10,000 is probably good. Clamp it so it's not bright. And then we'll do negative 1,000 to pull it back just a little bit. Now to explain a little bit, uh, the multiply add node is basically acting as a brightness and contrast node. So the multiply is actually contrast and the add is brightness. And now that we have all that set up, you can see this is starting to look pretty good. Now we're going to want to apply this to our albedo texture now. So let's add a mix RGB node. Let's set it to multiply. Now let's add a value node. Let's set this to two probably works pretty well. And then we want to take our multiply add node and put that into the multiply here. Now you can see there's something happening here. We're starting to have actual sunlight now. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is you're actually going to want to go to the view transform here in the color management settings and set it to standard. This is basically switching from filmic to sRGB, which is going to make your colors look better. Now you could either do that or you can stay in filmic and you can actually switch the albedo texture to filmic sRGB so that way the texture actually fits the sRGB to the filmic space. So that means you can use an environment in full filmic without having to worry about your sRGB textures here. And with that we have pretty much all the basics done so far and I will see you all in part two where we'll go over room lights.